In this episode, Android video calls coming soon, new iPod Touch in a few weeks, and Twitter is launching official tweet buttons. Quicksurf Internet Media presents The Geekinator, talking about all things tech and geek. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech gets here, do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 3, Episode 17. From Read Write Web, there's a story, a uh, survey finds enterprise is overwhelmingly open source. Xenos, the corporate sponsor of the cloud-based networking and management project Xenos Core, has released the results of its 2010 open source systems management survey. The survey was based on almost 1,000 completed surveys gathered at its Usenic Large Installation System Administration Conference and within the Xenos Core open source community. Pooling data from 2006 to 2009, the survey tracks the changing adoption and usage patterns for open source software in enterprise organizations. So the survey's findings are 98% of the respondents indicated that they used open source software in some form and on a scale of 1 to 10 rated their satisfaction between 7 and 8. Really? Uh, 71% of 2009 respondents indicated that open source was easier than proprietary software to deploy, up from 48% in 08 and 38% in 07 and 26% in 06. So this is good news. Um, it goes through a list of bullet points of all the findings uh, of this. Some of the stuff I'm, uh, I'd, I'd have to say... Uh, Myself working in, you know, IT and programming and information systems uh, might be a little suspect for the from the simple fact that, you know, they're polling people that are interested in open source and are going to open source conferences and are part of this open source community. You know, it doesn't I would have to wonder, you know, how this speaks towards the larger collection of corporations because there's a lot of corporations uh, that I've worked at that didn't they weren't open source period they just weren't you know and in the instances where they you know where where you did find that it was extremely restricted and controlled and risk managed and you know the whole nine yards so I'm curious to see how this would compare to a general corporate population. Like if they went to the, you know, top 100 or the top 500 companies on the Forbes list and said, hey, we have this survey we want you to take. Would you be willing to fill it out? I'd be interested to see uh, what what the, those results, how those results would compare to this. Let's talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools that let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend, but the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express. It's the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. Why GoToAssist Express? Well, it has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it is secure. IT professionals, really anybody who doesn't have time to squander with the tool that's slow or unreliable will appreciate GoToAssist Express. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating. It's so fast you'll be on the other computer troubleshooting what's wrong or showing them how to do something in seconds. And it's consistently reliable. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash techpodcast. From Electronista, there's a story here. Nintendo pushes past 30 million Wii sales in the U.S. This is amazing. 
Nintendo has disclosed sales numbers for its popular Wii console, which has surpassed 30 million units in the U.S. The achievement was reached in less than four years of sales, which allegedly makes it the fastest selling console of all time, according to the company. You know, I'm not going to dispute this at all. Um, in the past, I'm not in the market for a Wii now, but in the past, when I, when I was looking just, you know, to see if I could even buy one or even if they had a demo unit that I could play with, uh, for quite some time, uh, I had trouble finding retailers with Wii's in stock. I mean, this went on for several months where I could literally could not find you know, I couldn't buy one if I wanted to. Everyone was out of stock and they were back ordered and they had a waiting list. And so uh, I, I'm not surprised in the least with this 30 million Wii sales in the U.S. I mean, over a four-year period, that's phenomenal. Outsells everything else. What can you say? From Mashable over at Mashable.com, offline access to cloud documents comes to the iPhone and iPad. Cloud storage and collaboration platform Box.net has just updated its iPhone and iPad application with support for offline downloads and background processing in iOS 4. Sweet! The update, which should be hitting the App Store soon, will make it easier for users to get things done and access their documents whether they are connected to the internet or not. So that will be very handy for you for the users who use Box.net. From Mashable, Twitter is launching a f official tweet buttons this week. This is sweet. It's about time, too. The uh, Twitter is launching an official tweet button for sharing articles on websites and counting how many times a URL has been shared, according to documents uh, Mashable has obtained. The tweet button could launch as soon as this Thursday, which is cool because we're recording this Tuesday night and releasing it Wednesday night for all of you to get Thursday morning. So you very well could be able to do this by the time you're watching this. We're still diving into the details, but from what we can tell, the tweet button is des designed to be the most comprehensive counter of retweets and shares across Twitter's network. It's a single line of code that can be added to any website. Awesome. They have multiple versions of the buttons, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Easy to embed code, all that good stuff. So by all means, check this out. This is really awesome stuff. I know a lot of you uh, are on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. We're all on Twitter. So uh, it'll be cool to see how this all works out. From Electronista, Google special event Thursday may bring Android video calls. Now, I'm, like I just said, recording this Tuesday night. It's uh, 9.56 p.m. And um, by the time this is released, Thursday morning or Wednesday at midnight, 11.59 p.m. Wednesday night, um, Google will be holding this special event it's speculation at this point. The article is pointing out that it may bring Android video calls a la FaceTime. Not necessarily compatible with Apple's FaceTime, but still, nonetheless, uh, pretty neat stuff. Uh, there's a couple of other iterations going on around the web, so it'll be interesting to see uh, on the next episode. Actually, we may actually report this on Linux Newslog if it's Linux or open source based, because obviously it's going to hopefully be uh, a Android based. So we will be reporting that on Linux news log, and then we may touch on it again with any new added information on the next episode of the Geekinator, but uh, pretty neat stuff by all means. Uh, keep an eye out for it. From Gizmodo, there's a rumor floating around, uh, that there are, are possible new iPod touch coming in the next couple of weeks have dual cameras and built in retina display a la iPhone four. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that all is going to happen, but, uh, I'm kind of excited for it. You know, I mean, this is, you know, Apple does do their iPod event, August, September, you know, going into October, November, December for the holiday season. If they're going to release anything, uh, new iPod related, this is, this is going to be it. So it, this will be pretty cool. I'll, I'll be interested to see what happens with this. Obviously, this is all speculation until something happens, um, simply because iPod doesn't talk about new releases or anything of that nature. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what comes of this, but uh, still pretty neat nonetheless. From Gizmodo, there's a story that I found, 171 absolutely abstract wallpapers. This is pretty cool. Um, 
basically it's just a bunch of wallpapers of abstract art that just looks neat and interesting and cool. Um, I'm a huge fan of abstract wallpaper, so by all means, check this out if you're looking for some really neato stuff. A lot of this is just like, <laughs> that's awesome, you know, so by all means, you know, check it out. That'll pretty much do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Geekinator, actually, uh, at quicksurf.com. I think geekinator.com is taking... Uh, anyway, at quicksurf.com. And uh, you can follow me online, twitter.com slash Adrian underscore Bacon. I've been getting requests. One of the uh, YouTube readers said, hey, I really wish you'd link up everything I talked about or everything you talk about in the sh in the show notes. Well, I do... Unfortunately, you have to go to my website to get it. Um, the various video sharing sites that I that share the video to don't have inconsistent HTML handling in the description of the video. So I I found it best to provide full HTML on my website to the show notes and point everybody there. Quicksurf.com. It's easy to remember. I have a listing of all the latest episodes there. You can just go through and click on all of them and get all the information you want. So do that. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye. In this episode, Andrew, Android video calls coming soon, new iPod touch in a few weeks, and Twitter is a long, and Twitter, three, two, and Twitter is launching official tweet buttons.